So let's talk about specific styles or patterns that we need to have in your essential lake fly fishing box. No question that the biggest, most prolonged, most abundant hatch in lakes are the chronomid. And so you're gonna need to have a very well stocked box of chronomid pupil patterns as well as some of the chronomid larval patterns. But it's the chronomid pupa that the trout really do focus on. And they're different sizes and colors. That's because trout are not colorblind and they can discern size and color. And there's thousands of species of chronomids as we talked about in the life cycle. And uh, we need to get as close to matching the hatch as possible with these chronomids because the fact that the fish can discern size and color. So the go-to colors uh, for chronomids are, you know, black and red, silver body one or chromy type ones, green ones, uh, dark green ones, lime green ones. Uh, we can have brown ones, uh, but common colors, black and red, black and silver body or rib, black and gold rib are the, are the most common uh, chronomid colors to go to. And then chronomids are the first hatch that comes off each spring and those are followed by mayflies. That's the next hatch. So all these hatches occur in a, the same sequence year after year after year. It's chronomid hatches first, followed by mayflies, followed by damselflies, caddisflies, dragonflies. And then although not a hatch, we see water boatmen and back swimmers in the fall again. So the second hatch of the year to emerge from our lakes are mayflies. So mayfly nymphs, and then we've got the adult mayflies here as well. So we need to have some gold beaded uh, mayfly nymphs, pheasant tail nymphs, or hare's ears are all effective patterns. And then we have to have some uh, parachute atoms uh, for the um, adult calabatus mayfly. Again, an important hatch mid-May through to the end of June, sometimes into earlier July. They're followed, the mayflies are followed by damselflies. And so those damsel nymphs can live up to two years in the nymphal stage. So we're fishing damselfly nymphs in light mustard yellow, light olive, light olive ones into darker olive ones. Um, so they, again, their coloration is depending on the habitat they're living on. And uh, again, that's a good hatch during mid-June into, into July. So the damsel nymphs are very, very important. And then we have uh, dragonflies that hatch, and we saw those as well. So these are deer hair patterns that imitate dragonfly nymphs that we're gonna be fishing right on the bottom of the lake. And again, we're gonna talk about essential fly lines in another episode. So dragonflies, nymphs, we need to have in our box as well. So following that, we will get some caddis hatches. And uh, again, they're in the same box here. So we've got caddis pupa and that uh, we're imitating that pupil swim as they're swimming quickly to the surface of the lake. And then we're using big deer hair patterns to imitate the adults that sit on the water and the trout take them off the surface and that's when we get our great dry fly fishing. So caddis pupa and then caddis adults are the next things to come off. So we've covered off the essential hatches that we're gonna see during the year. And then late in the fall, we're gonna see those water boatmen and back swimmer falls. So here's some back swimmers and water boatmen patterns. Remember that they have a third pair of highly elongated legs, so that's why we have all the rubber legs that are coming off the sides of these things. So boatmen, back swimmers, an essential fly to fish late in the fall. And finally, we've got leeches, which again, aren't an insect. Uh, they're a segmented roundworm, but leeches are an important food source. So you can see the diversity of colors of leeches, maroon ones, brown ones, black ones, more black ones, all, 
black peacock, green in color, and then more maroon ones, different sizes, different colors, uh, because you find them in, different, in those different shades, uh, subtle shades of green. But if you were only to pick one color of a leech pattern, it would be a maroon one, like this guy right here, or a red one, like that. So leeches available 365 days a year, great early spring, great summer searching pattern, and a killer pattern late in the fall when there are no other insects hatching at that time of year and fish go back on to bread and butter food sources. And then finally, the, the other very, very common food source out there, year round again, just like leeches, are their shrimp, our gamrus and hyalella shrimp that are available to eat all times of year, gives our fish great flesh color, that deep orange reddish flesh color, puts lots of weight on them. The biggest fish that come out of some of our famous lakes in BC are always lakes that have got extremely abundant shrimp populations. So shrimp patterns in olive green, light olive to dark olive, put, you can put little beads on them, bead headed, segment them, they're distinctly segmented. And again, we'll talk specifically later about how to fish these patterns on, on what fly lines you need. So that about covers off all the essential different food sources that trout feed on and some of the basic imitations that you'll want to consider to have in your fly boxes the next time you go fishing. Mm -hmm.